Hello, thank you for taking a moment to watch this video. And on this particular training, I wanna show you how you can start powering through your calls at a rate of 60 to 80 dials an hour using the power of foam burner. Now, before we dive into the nitty gritty, let me give you a quick little overview of the home tab within the foam burner app once you've installed it into your org. So everybody will have access to this home page where they're gonna see a list of all of their leads and they can even launch a dial session right from here. Not only that, right here on this home page, we're going to give you access to a sample cadence that's going to take all of the leads that are assigned to each of the agents, right? And allow them to make their first attempt, their day three call, day five calls. Now, of course, these are sample list views. You can, of course, go in there and edit those to better match any cadence that you and your team might want to follow. But this is to help you out of the gate better take advantage of your leads, the leads you and your team are following up with. Now on top of that, we've also got some reports that are added to this homepage. So you can see a list of all of the leads that you've called this week, this month, or so on and so forth. But that's a quick little overview of the homepage. Let's jump over to the leads tab. I'm gonna go ahead and click on leads. And when you load your leads, obviously you're able to create as many lead list views as you'd like out of the gate. Phoneburner is going to give you some sample lead list views to work through that go along with that cadence that you saw on the homepage. You're also going to get a few custom fields as part of your leads object. And those are number of attempts, last attempt date, and the last disposition or the outcome of the last call. And to go along with these custom fields, there's also a flow to automatically update these fields. Speaking of calls, let's jump into a dial session. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a list of records, click the begin phone burner session button. And when I go to start my dial session, I can choose whether or not I wanna call those leads sorted by name or company name. In this particular case, I'm just gonna start a dial session sorted by name. And when setting up your dial session, there are certain settings that you get to configure for every session. And one really cool feature in Phone Burner is the ability to preset or predefine those settings. And here you can see I've created several presets and I'm gonna use the attempt number one preset and go ahead and get connected. Now I'm connected, I'm gonna start dialing and I'm gonna start calling the first record on my list. So here I'm calling Adam, and of course we've sorted these contacts by name. Now if it goes to voicemail, I click the voicemail button. I move on to the next call. I don't have to wait for the beep. I don't have to listen to the greeting. I just click that button and move on. So let me show you that one more time. Click that button, I'm off to the next call. Now of course if somebody answers the phone live, there's no pause, no delay, no awkward silence. I just start talking to them like I would anyone else. At some point I'm gonna click this live answer button and I'm gonna end the call when I'm done talking to them. Now, before we disposition this call, I wanna to talk to you about some of the features that you're gonna have access to right here in the dial session window. First and foremost, you're gonna see the lead details record right here. All of the details specific to that lead are right here front and center and you can edit and update this record live when you're on the call. So let's say I get an email address for Mr. Alec Holland. So I double click on the email address enter the email address that I just got from him while I was on the phone with him and save it. Now that's updated, it's saved in Salesforce. What if I need to add a note about this call I just had with Alec? I click on the create note button here, add a quick little note and save that note. Or what if I need to create a follow-up task, a follow-up call? I click on the create follow-up task button. That pops up a little window here. add all of the specifics about the call that I need to be doing with him in the future, and I save that. Now, if I wanna see any of my past call history with this contact, I can click on the call history tab. And here you can see all of my call history with this contact. Or what if I wanna see my notes? I click on notes and I see my notes. Now, of course, this contact only has one note, the note that I just created. And of course, if I wanted to, I could actually create a note from here as well. Now, what if there's something I need to do to this record that I just can't do right here in the dial session? Which isn't much, right? We can do a lot right here in the dial session window. But if I need to, I can click on this Edit in Salesforce link. That'll take me straight to this record in Salesforce 
where I can review all of the details and make any changes that I may need to make to this lead directly in Salesforce. Once I've done, once I've updated everything I need to related to this specific lead, I'm gonna go ahead and disposition the call, click on one of these buttons, and these buttons are completely configurable. You can create as many disposition buttons as you want or need to help you and your team better manage or better navigate your calls. So let's say I set an appointment with this Alec Holland. I'm gonna go ahead and click Set Appointment. Once I do that, I'm immediately taken to the next call. In this case, Andrew Sample. If it goes to voicemail, click the voicemail button. If he doesn't answer, I click the no answer button. And again, if they answer live, no pause, no delay, no awkward silence, just start talking to them, click the live answer button at some point, and then disposition the call once you're done updating everything you need to related to that record. So as you can see, it's super simple, super easy to navigate through your calls. But that's only part of what you can do with phone burner. Right now, we're just talking about leads. Let's go ahead and move this off of our screen. Let's go back to our lead list view. And here you'll see because of our workflow, because of our flow, the number of attempts have already updated for these records. The last attempt date has already updated. The last disposition has already updated. And if we open up these, let's go ahead and take Alec Holland, for example. Let's take a look at what was added to that record automatically. Every call that you make to your Salesforce leads through phone burner will automatically get logged as an activity, completed activity in Salesforce. That means that you will be able to create flows of your own that will be triggered automatically based off of the call outcome in phone burner. Now that's the leads object. We also have the ability to initiate a dial session from your contacts object so that you can create list views and contacts select those records and initiate a phone burner dial session. Now, a lot of times when you're calling through your contacts, those calls are going to create opportunities. And when you create opportunities, sometimes you want to call the contacts related to those opportunities. So let's jump over to the opportunities object in Salesforce, and you'll see that you also have the option to begin a contact phone burner session directly from opportunities and call the contact related to the opportunity, or you can also set it up or configure it so that you call the opportunity itself. So if you wanna call the opportunity record, that would mean that you'd have to have a phone number associated with that opportunity, but you could certainly call the opportunity record. Now, what does that mean? When you're in a dial session and you're looking at the details right here, in this particular case, I'm looking at the lead details, right? Because this is the dial session from the lead list view that I started. But if I'm calling from the opportunity, if I choose to dial the contact related to the opportunity, I'd be looking at contact details. If I choose to call the opportunity record itself, then I'd be looking at the opportunity details. Now, in this particular case, that would be these details here. Now, keep that in mind. You have both options, but it's up to you to decide how you want to manage that. Also, you may run into situations where you want to call accounts. Now from the accounts object, you can also begin a dial session. Now this would allow you to actually dial the account record. Once again, you would need to have a phone number associated with every account, and then the system would call the phone number on the account. Now, obviously in Salesforce, you have the ability to have contacts associated with the accounts. But in this particular case, when you're dialing from the accounts object, you're actually going to be calling the account record and the activities are gonna be logged to that account. You also have the ability to start a dial session from cases. This can be really helpful for your support staff. If they're doing follow-up calls to your customers that have submitted support tickets or cases, they can begin a dial session right here from the case object and call the case itself or the contact related to the case. Once again, that'll be up to you to decide how you want your team to manage that, but you'll have both options. Now, if your team is gonna be calling on the case itself, every case will need to have a phone number assigned to it in order for that, that case to be called. No big deal, but just something to remember, right? 
Now, those are all objects that come as part of your Salesforce org, right? Just about everybody in Salesforce has access to these objects. But what if you've created a custom object? For example, I've got this object called Osnes, and I've got Osnes records in here. If I wanted to be able to dial the contacts or records associated to the Osnes object, great news. You can do that with Phoneburner, but you'll have to create that configuration. Phoneburner doesn't know about your custom object, so you're going to have to create a configuration. We have an option for that. You go to this Create Configuration tab in the Phoneburner app, and from here, you're going to go ahead and grab the object that you want to create the configuration for. So in this case, I'm choosing the Osnes object, and I'm going to call the Osnes records. Now, if you have a custom object that is related to the contact records, has a relationship to like the contact records, you can do that as well, and you should see the contact field API listed in here. But in this particular case, I'm going to show you how to add this configuration to a custom object so that you can actually dial those custom object records. So I'm going to go ahead and create the mapping. Once I've created that mapping, you'll see this other option to update configuration. And you'll see that my Osnes custom object is listed here. And I'm calling the Osnes records, right? Now, if I go back to the Osnes object, I still don't have an option to begin a dial session. And that's because I have to go and add the begin dial session buttons to this object. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my setup. I'm going to go to Object Manager, find my custom object, and from here I'm going to go down to the Search Layouts, edit the default layout, and I'm going to add the Begin Osnes Phone Burner Session button and save it. Now, even though I'm working out of Lightning, I still need to add that same button to the search layout for Salesforce Classic. For whatever reason, we need to make sure that it's added to both of these right now with Salesforce. And it looks like it's already there, but let's just confirm. Yep, it's there. Let's go ahead and resave. Now, if we go back to the Osnes object and we refresh, There we go. I can select my records, and now I have the ability to launch a foam burner power dialing session to the records that are part of that custom object. Now, before we wrap up, there is another thing I want to mention about dialing from custom objects, and that happens inside the foam burner UI. So when you create an integration like I just did with my custom object called Osnes, I also need to tell foam burner which field or fields contain phone numbers. So I'm gonna go into the integration section, I'm gonna to go to the details within Salesforce, and I'm gonna go down here to the custom mapping section. In here is where I can go to add new field mappings or essentially tell PhoneBurner what phone number fields coming from Salesforce should be phone numbers. Right, so if we go back to the custom object and I go to fields and relationships, there's gonna be a field in here for phone numbers. In this particular case, I've got a phone number field called best phone. I need to make sure that this field name is added to my custom mapping, which it currently is. If it wasn't, I would just go ahead and paste it in here, choose whether or not it's a home, work, mobile, fax, or other, and save it. Once I save it, it's gonna be added as a custom mapping, and I would then be able to start dialing the records that are part of that custom object. Now this custom mappings option works for any object. So if you've got other objects that contain custom phone number field that you wanna call, make sure you add those here as well. Anyway, thank you for taking a moment to watch this video. This video is a bit longer than I'd like it to be, but as you can see, there is a lot packed into the phone burner integration within Salesforce. So much you can do, and there's a lot to configure. So if you need some help getting your Salesforce account configured to power through your calls using 
phone burner. Reach out to our support team. Let's get you a one-on-one -on -one call scheduled so that we can help you get more done using the power of phone burner. Thanks again and happy dialing.